Hello, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Vijay Raghavan. Let's discuss benign disease of the salivary gland. It's a large topic. Let's go one after another. Now, benign salivary gland diseases can be divided as infective, stone disease, functional disorders, traumatic or obstructive disorders, autoimmune disorders, neoplastic disorders, and salivary fistula. Now, coming to infective diseases, most commonly you get parotiditis or submandibular sialadenitis. It can be acute or chronic. It can be bacterial or viral. Acute bacterial parotitis is very unusual except in old age or patients who are bedridden for a long time, patients in intensive care due to poor dental hygiene. It can be due to dehydration or medication predominantly parasympatholytic drugs or sympathomimetic drugs which cause reduced secretion from these glands associated with poor oral care can lead to parotitis. One fact you have to remember is acute parotitis in neonatals can be fatal. So the treatment will be only to cover them with antibiotics and maintain a good oral hygiene. Chronic and secondary to stone diseases or stenosis or autoimmune diseases. Coming to viral infections, mumps, which is very common, bilateral, obviously we don't see it much after the immunization schedules. HIV produces unilateral or bilateral enlargement of the parotid gland without pain, causing zero stomia, less salivary secretion, hyperplastic intraparotid lymphoid tissue or lymphocytic infiltration. Other viral diseases are influenza, parainfluenza, CMV, Coxsackie virus. Now clinically there is a progressive enlargement with pain which is aggravated classically by chewing. It is bilateral in case of mumps which is associated with malaise, anorexia and fever. HIV produces painless swelling of the parotid gland. Clinically the gland is edematous, indurated, tender. Massaging the gland can show pus in the stenosis duct, which is in the case of bacterial parotitis. Chronic parotitis or painless swelling of the gland. Coming to the management, imaging is rarely necessary. Sonography may help in identifying stones if they are the cause for the acute infection. So recurrent acute infection needs imaging to rule out stenosis or stones in the duct. Treatment of parotitis is predominantly conservative with massage and silagogues. Increase the secretion, the drainage will unblock and the stasis will be prevented, further reducing the chance of infection. Antibiotic cover, especially against staphylococcus. In neonates, as we said, it can be fatal. Aggressive antibiotics 